Hello and welcome to Your Health Moment Podcast. I'm your host, Max Sturdivant, better known as Dr. Fitness. On this podcast, I want to give you the tools to start, continue, and never give up on your journey towards health. Now, whether you struggle with your weight, eating the right food, hydration, exercise, or even time management, you're in the right place and I'm here for you. Now, let's dive right into this episode. Thank you for joining us for another episode of Your Health Moment. I'm your host, Dr. Fitness. As always, we will discuss all things holistic and wellness, and there'll be no different today, except we have the pleasure of interviewing Rita Black, and we're going to discuss, get this, using hypnosis to manage your weight. Have you ever thought of that? You know, we do it with smoking and we do it with a lot of other things that we're familiar with it. But now look, wait, really cool thing. Rita is an author, a speaker, a director of shift hypnosis in Los Angeles. She's an expert in um, psychology, the psychology of weight management and an author of the best-selling book from fat to thin thinking. Unlock Your Mind for Permanent Weight Loss. Now, before Rita was a hypnotherapist, she was a client using hypnosis to um, stop a pack and a half of smoking a day. That's a huge habit. And we all know that smoking is not the best thing for us. But look, Rita knocked it out. Um, And (laughs) in the process, she also released 40 pounds. It's her passion now to help others like you and me to transform. Her hypnosis-based online course, the Shift Weight Mastery Process, and the Smoke Free 123 have helped thousands by harnessing the power of their subconscious to shift past beliefs and habit barriers, creating powerful breakthroughs that last. Now, we all have those habit barriers, and, um, and few of us actually get to explore them. So I'm really excited that Rita is here, and I appreciate you joining us today, Rita Black. Why don't we start with you telling us something about yourself? What do you do? Hey, I'm so happy to be here. Thank you. So yeah, so I am a clinical hypnotherapist. I uh, started uh, over 20 years ago helping people manage their weight and stop smoking only after, like you said in my bio, um, I found hypnosis through stopping a pack and a half a day habit. And I stopped in one session, which blew my mind. I was like, what the heck? I always thought hypnosis. And I think a lot of people still think of hypnosis as sort of voodoo and magic. And, uh, you know, you think of the guy with the polyester suit and who's waving the, you know, the watch in front of your eyes and, you know, putting you in some sort of crazy trance and uh, you wake up and you're like, where was I? What I, I'm, why am I all of a sudden barking like a dog? Um, but uh, really hypnosis allows you to use more of your mind because the crazy thing is I have my little, if you're watching this, I have this little very bad diagram of the brain, but, uh, you know, only 12% of our mind is our conscious, critical, analytical part of the mind. So when you're trying to make a change, like stop smoking or lose weight, right? Like 12% of your mind wants to do that. 12% of your mind wants to stop smoking. 12% of your mind actually knows how to lose weight, wants to lose weight. The other 88% that's subconscious, our beliefs, our habits, our memory, it, it wants to stay the same. You know, it's and and we the weird thing is, you know, from birth until we're in our 20s, everything gets imprinted on our subconscious. And then as we get into our later, like our 20s, um, this really amazing thing happens in our brain, which is actually great. It helps us a lot, which is we develop a what is mm-hmm. called a critical filter, Max. And it's uh, it's this filtering system, because, as you know, we have thousands and thousands of inputs per second into our brain, right? Like we visually see things, we hear things. Our brain has to sort through so much data, basically. 
that it develops this critical filter system to only align with things that we already know to be true for the most part. You know, like that's why people don't change religion every week or, you know, they kind of get set in, you know, what they call like you can't teach an old dog new tricks. So we would it fair to be that would be a habit barrier? That would be a habit barrier or a barrier to changing a habit mm-hmm. easily, like stopping smoking. You know, a lot of people come to me for smoking cessation or use my online program. And, you know, they know they've been told for years, it's bad for your health. You know, it's expensive now. It's like 12 bucks a pack here in LA, right? Like there's many, many reasons for people to stop smoking or vaping. Um, But, you know, when they go to try to stop, they get a lot of what they consider uh, withdraw or cravings and, and cravings are really the mind attaching to that idea. It's like kind of having a romantic relationship. And so a person could be like puffing away on a cigarette or eating something that they're like, why am I even eating this? I know this isn't good for me. I'm not even really tasting or enjoying it, but that there's just this forward momentum with smoking or, and then this other part of their mind is because you love it because you have to have it. So there's this sort of, uh, you know, people often with weight and with smoking really feel bad about themselves because they're like, what is wrong with me? Like, why can't I make sense? Like, why can't I stop? I know it's bad for me. Or why can't I lose weight? I know what to do. Most people who struggle with their weight, as you know, Mm -hmm. you know, they know what to do. They've read all the diet books. They've gone on probably by the time they hit 50, 20 diets. 25 diet. You're right. I think the average person does know what to do. Um, Rita, we're going to hold it right here on, you know, the average people kind of know what to do. And when we come back, we're going to talk about strategies to start doing what you know. Are you tired of living in pain and feeling on the edge? Introducing McGowan Spinal Rehabilitation Center. Located In the heart of Jacksonville, Florida, the team at McGowan is dedicated to unraveling the mystery behind your neck pain, your back pain, your shoulder pain by employing a wellness approach to diagnose the root causes of your pain and optimize conditions for normal function, as well as unlock a new level of vitality and vibrant health. Because you deserve to live pain-free and thrive in every aspect of your health. Visit McGowanSRC.com for more information. That's McGowanSRC.com. Welcome back. Hey, Rita, it's good to see you again. Um, And we are getting into, you know, People understand they need to change, but now we're going to talk about, you know, and more specifically, what's holding them back and why is it so difficult for them to change? We know that uh, there's a, a large part of what they don't understand. It's it's keeping them in place, and only a small part of our operating brain from your last diagram is engaged and wanting to make this change. Um, so how do we get that larger part of the brain to to, to catch up with the 12% to, to make the necessary change that we need. Yeah. Well, so other than like, so hypnosis, just the basic idea behind hypnosis is when you're in a hypnotic state, that critical filter, which was on the other diagram, but it's just like that sort of the line between the 12% and the 88% just for, you know, use it becomes relaxed. So you're able to come in and give suggestions to the subconscious mind to make more rapid changes. Like for instance, I myself became a non-smoker in one session, not for magic or voodoo, but because I made the decision to be a non-smoker from a deeper part of my brain. So this is what uh, hypnosis can offer is rapid change with habits, with beliefs by really getting in and making suggestions on a deeper level. However, we can, and you can today, uh, your audience, 
can start to use their minds more effectively. You know, I feel like my both my children are in college now and I and my daughter is studying psychology. However, I'm like why are they just not teaching people how to use their mind more effectively to get wow. better results in life? Because like mm-hmm. we were talking about just before your commercial break, most people know more about weight loss than their doctors, right? Like, you know, the average listener could probably write their, if they're struggling with their weight, write their own diet book and have people lose weight. Like that's not the challenge. The challenge is getting consistent. And most people don't get consistency because they give up on themselves. So one of the top things that you can do, I have my little cheat sheet up here, is oh, I can't you see. can start... Oh, you can't? I did oh, cheat sheet. Oh. If we could move your computer over. Yeah. I'm sorry me... for everyone listening. Um, Rita has this wonderful chart up. And so if you're listening now, you want to go back and see these charts. Check us out on YouTube, and then you'll be able to see the visual charts as well. Okay. Yeah. You'll love it. You'll love the chart. Now, can you see it now? I can definitely or... see it now. So, okay, good. Mm-hmm. So, so the first... Thing. So I'm going to tell you three ways you can use your brain today, starting today, to totally shift out of what I would call the weight struggle mindset. And the first one is identity, right? Like, so for instance, when I was a smoker, um, I would try to quit smoking, but I still saw myself as a smoker. It's very hard to stop smoking when you see yourself as a smoker, right? Now, For those of you out there who are in a committed, like a marriage or something like that, the moment you said, I do to your husband or wife, you stepped into a new identity of being a spouse or a husband or a wife, right? You weren't trying not to be single. You were being a husband or a wife. The moment I became a non-smoker, I was like, okay, I get this. I, this is who I am being, not trying not to smoke, which is deprivation oriented. Now with weight, it's a little different because when we struggle with weight, we are in this world of weight struggle, right? We're always trying to be good. We're and and, and we have this self view of we we don't respect ourselves. We think we're a failure because we've tried so many diets and it hasn't worked out. You know, so it's a very limited and negative viewpoint we have of ourselves. So you can't like shift from. W- w- So what is most important, and you probably are totally on this because you're a teacher as well, the best mindset to be in as a student, like to see yourself as a learner, because most of what the weight management journey is about is learning and self-correcting. It isn't about being perfect. Wow, that is a nugget. That is a huge nugget. Can you repeat that again, Rita? Because I think there's someone out there who really needs to hear that again. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, it, here's the thing is that the, the diet industry sets us up for failure because there's diets are external structures you go on and you're either good on it or you're bad on it. So we have learned to, you know, see ourselves as strugglers who are always trying to be good on something, failing and starting over again. And that that repeats and deepens our identity as somebody who's struggling. The moment you become a learner, I'm a weight learner. I'm self-correcting myself. That's when I begin to get some traction because I'm respecting myself because I see myself as a student of something. And you kind of, you can't fail when you're learning something, right? You're, you're, you can only progress and get better. And most people know this because the best, you know, whatever you're great at in your life, you were never perfect at. You just kept trying and self-correcting and self-correcting, Right. So, you know, weight management and, you know, what you teach, what, what what we all are teachers of people, helping people get better is about shifting out of the self-condemnation and, and this identity where we hold ourselves in low self-esteem to high self-esteem. The moment you start learning, it doesn't matter if you have 300 pounds to lose or five pounds to lose you can see yourself in a very positive outlook because you are now progressing towards something. Does that make sense? No, that makes total sense. Um, It's that paradigm shift in your head. Mm -hmm. And, and I think we all have to make that shift and, and we're all making those shifts every day of our lives. 
we're looking at things and deciding um, how we're going to view ourselves in this particular struggle. For example, if you're in a car accident, um, you can be someone who complains about the car accident, or you can be someone who goes, wow, what lesson did I learn from this? And what can I do better next time to make sure, A, it doesn't happen again, or if it does happen, I got the right insurance and this and that, and I'm all set. And and I think people that, um, there are the people that have, um, uh, that accomplish more because they're oh. always learners. And, and your brain becomes open, right? Like your subconscious mm. mind becomes open because now it's like scanning for, oh, what did I learn today? Mm. Oh, I just ate three pieces of pizza. Okay. Now, if I was on a diet, I'd be like, okay, I blew it. I'm starting over. I learned nothing from that. What? But if I'm like, I ate three pieces of pizza, what did I learn from that? Like, maybe I shouldn't start eating pizza when I'm super hungry. <laughs> Maybe I should eat something else. For You're like, then you're starting to learn something from something that, you know, maybe if you don't have a win situation, you're going to learn something. I'm sorry what I interrupted is, you. No, that's perfect. What are your thoughts about structuring it? Because like we were talking earlier, I love your chart because I'm a real visual learner. Mm. And so some of us can experience things and not get the lessons that we need because maybe the lesson wasn't presented in a way that we can really receive it well. Mm-hmm. So if we're a visual learner or whether we're an auditory learner um, or a tactical learner, I mean, you want to have the experience so you can embrace it best. Um, uh, do you have any thoughts about that? Well, I feel like for me, um, I like when I work with people, I have them see themselves as apprentices of weight mastery, right? So that their brain is always on. And whether that's visual, auditory, kinesthetic, um, uh, you know, and, and structurally, I would say, you know, I have people do like a meditation in the morning to think about like, what am I going to learn today? And I'm going to go through and I'm going to think about like, what didn't work for me yesterday? Where can I kind of prep my mind to do better today? Mm-hmm. Like if we're a night eater or if we're somebody who snacks in the afternoon, like we start to see, oh, every day this happens. So in the morning, how can I set myself up for success for this afternoon, this morning? So my mind has time to get the lesson, to you know, and if I struggle with it again, maybe I'll I'll learn something a little more. So it's self-correct, self-correct. And, and then I'm moving through that. I'm getting to the other side. Um, you know, identity sits at the top of our subconscious mind. That's why I think identity is such a critical piece of this. And I don't think a lot of people uh, address this piece, you know, because I think a lot of people like there's the weight drugs out there now that are, you know, um, uh, making weight loss easy. But I get a lot of these clients who have taken some of these drugs and now they're either having to go off the drug because their insurance isn't paying for it anymore, or they have this fear because they still see themselves as a struggler who's gone on this drug, who do you know what I mean? And haven't really changed from the inside out. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, we have to look at all of these pieces, the mindset piece as, you know, and an identity piece, I, I think is critical for any change. And then, and then the next piece for me is what I would call the communication piece, like the inner communication. Because I think a lot the of self-talk. people- Self-talk. The self-talk, yeah. And, and maybe Max, you address this a lot too, but there's a lot of- you know, what I call our inner critic when it comes to dieting and weight management, because I, again, diets are these external structures that we go on and we kind of have this value system of like, I'm either being good on it. And when we are being good on it, you know, we feel great. You know, there's a lot of dopamine hits. We get on the scale, the scale's down. It's like, woohoo. And, you know, it's a dopamine, dopaminogenic experience. Like we get that reward uh, neurotransmitter firing and it feels great. 
But the moment we go off track, uh, eat something we weren't supposed to, have a long weekend what, that got a little crazy, you know, the holidays are coming up right now, I, you know, like the, or, you know, the any holiday season, there's like a holiday every single month of the year, let's face it. You know, we the moment we get off track, we're bad. And so we'll stop. We'll give up on ourselves. We'll start again on Monday. We'll consume a lot of calories between, you know, whenever we give up and, and Monday, you know, because let's face it, we're going to get it all in before we start being good again. And so uh, that inner critic really drives this on again, off again behavior because it's so judgmental, right? Oh, wow. And, and again, there's no learning in that. Um, so uh, I, and I'm sure you probably are on the same lines uh, it, with regards to like developing a more powerful inner communication system, what I like to call your inner coach, mm-hmm. which again goes back to the learning piece, which is your inner coach is that inner voice that's saying, well, okay, that didn't look great, but uh, we got an opportunity here. Like, what did we learn? Uh, you know, how do we get back on track? You know, the next meal, not Mm -hmm. next Monday. And that starts to rewire your brain when you start to come to those moments that we give up on ourselves with a different inner voice. And those moments where we get to decide genuinely, I think of what I hear you saying, we reach those moments where we get to decide if what we did, we're going to look at as a threat or an opportunity. Mm -hmm. And if we look at it as a threat, we're on the decline. But if we look at it as an opportunity, it's another place time to put ourselves in that weight learner side and that persistent coach side. Love exactly. That. Yeah. And, and then the last piece. So we have identity, which sits at the top of the subconscious mind. We have inner communication because again, our thoughts create, you know, our behaviors or thoughts create feelings, which then create behaviors and actions. So that inner voice piece is a huge piece of the consistency puzzle. And then the last piece for me is really our focus. And I'm sure you're, you know, with, here, I'm just going to try to pull this off. uh, Is it short term? I can't see the. Yeah, it's short term here. Can I? Oh, yeah. Sure can. Okay. Oh, short term deprivation. Yeah, versus. Long-term transformation. Love it. Yeah. I mean, what do we have? All we have is our focus. Where are we focusing? And I think when we struggle with our weight, uh, we become very vulnerable to getting out of the pain, right? Because being struggling with our weight creates a lot of internal friction, self-abuse, and it's a very painful place to be. So people become very vulnerable to fast, easy, short-term solutions that are going to get them out of the pain, which makes total sense on one hand, right? Like, you know, I had a client who one time came in, she had spent tens of thousands of dollars on, you know, multiple, multiple weight loss programs. And here she was a very smart, educated, you know, woman of means and and she's like, if you told me I could um, eat a bucket of dirt and drink water and lose 30 pounds this month, I would do it, right? Like, that's how vulnerable we become. We become like, because we we are looking at like, I feel fat, I don't want to be fat. So we're not looking at who we want to become. We're looking at where we don't want to be. And so when we want to escape as quickly as possible, we become, you know, like pills, uh, uh, you know, surgery, all those things that, that we, you know, often end up, you know, I have had like hundreds of clients who've had weight loss surgery that maybe they lost weight and, and many of them gained a lot of it back. I mean, I'm not, I'm not against any buddy trying to get healthy and using any means. So I'm not against weight loss surgery. I'm not against current Medicaid. I like, I'm not against any, I'm really more against people being, I mean, for people being empowered and creating a powerful relationship with themselves in this area of their life, irregardless of what's going on, you know, externally 
or how they're getting there. But we need to really address the, you know, when when I lost 40 pounds and I kept it off and I've kept it off for 28 years, um, for me, I kind of had to sit down with myself and believe in myself. You know, I had to go, girl, you know, you're smart. You can figure this out, but you can't try to get out of it. You've got to believe in the long-term you. So I had a vision of the me at my ideal weight, like five years out. And I was mm-hmm. like, who is she being? What is she, what decisions is she making? Who, you know, and, and shifting that focus from the short term to like, who am I becoming and who I, who do I need to be to take care of myself and to eat in a way that allows me to live at my ideal weight? That then shifts my brain's focus to a vision. You know, there's that saying, and you probably know it, it's like the pain pushes until the vision pulls. Mm. You know, you need that vision that of where you're going and who you're becoming. And it's not just about the skinny you, but it's the powerful you, right? Like the you who wakes up in the morning and is like, I believe in us. What are we going to do today? And and how are we going to improve ourselves? I have a lot of clients right now or students in my programs, you know, who are like, you know, it's there's that idea of this ideal weight them, but there's all the little like, oh, I'm a person who pushes my plate away when I've had enough. You know, it's just like, oh, okay, that's who I'm becoming. I'm a person who says no when Aunt Susie offers me her cheesecake that I don't even like. And, you know, I used to eat it because I just want to make her happy for say, no, thank you, Aunt Susie. That looks amazing. But um, I'm going to pass right now. You know, like that, you know, that I think long term permanent weight management, it you're changing your relationship with yourself. You're changing your relationship with your environment. You're changing your relationship with food. You're changing your relationship with other people, all powerfully, all positively. But it's not just like, you know, don't eat this macronutrient or don't, you know, do this. It's like not that it is, but it's, it's a becomingness and not a not doing this or, you know. Yeah. I love that. Um, And we're going to take a really quick break. And when we come back, I would love to hear about your programs that you're offering online. And if we could uh, share some of the programs that people can do online, um, that would help them to to make this transformation. Um, We get to do that when we come back. So do not go anywhere. I promise we're coming right back with Rita Black. This episode of Your Health Moment podcast is brought to you by McGowan Spinal Rehabilitation Centers. So we're back. Rita, thank you so much for everything that you're doing. Can you uh, tell us about or tell the listeners about how they can try your, um, uh, your program on shifting their attitudes about weight management? For sure. I... So I have two, uh, two on, I have a program called the shift weight mastery process. It's a 30 day hypnosis based weight management process. If you want to check it out, it's shiftweightmastery.com. I think that will be in the show notes. It, uh, really helps people get their mindset straight around weight management. I, however, if you want to just test drive weight hypnosis, uh, you can check out my free masterclass that I believe that that link will be in the show notes. Um, the free masterclass is how to stop the weight struggle, the start oh. over tomorrow weight struggle cycle and begin weight releasing weight for good. So that is really addressing that start over habit that our brain gets into when we struggle with weight. Um, it does become an addictive habit actually for a lot of people because there is reward and pain in the habit itself. So um, I address that, I talk about it, and we do weight hypnosis as well. So we really look at the way to shift your mind so that you can remove the, you know, the mental roadblocks that keep you struggling with weight. Wow. Rita, is there one more thing that we may have missed that you think every listener should know? Well, I think at the root of your progress forward and for to really shift your mind is just to start to believe 
within yourself. You know, if you look at everything that's happened to you, and I think you said it earlier, I can, I could, when I struggled with my weight, I usually looked at all the diets that I had been on and I had been on like 30 diets in my life and failed them all. I could have looked at those as either like evidence of my failure or I could look at them as um, steps towards my ultimate success. Wow. And I, that for me is where I would say for you is like, you can look at your ha- past history and you can see that now as you're like, when you're telling your story of success, all of that informed you of something and was part of your powerful journey forward. Well, Rita Black, thank you for joining us today. And thank you listeners for tuning in for another episode of Your Health Moment. I look forward to talking to you again next week. So take care and bye for now. Thank you for listening to this episode of Your Health Moment podcast. If you enjoyed what you've heard, you can visit our website, yourhealthmoment.com for past episodes, show notes, and all the resources that we mentioned on the show. Feel free to connect with me on social media too. Send me a DM and let me know what your thoughts are about the episodes that you've been listening to. And don't be shy about requesting any other show topics that you might like to explore.